Guys, you can now play Doom on Bitcoin. You can buy a house as an NFT, and eBay is trying to compete with Amazon in Web3. It's happening. Bitcoin runs Doom. To the delight of crypto Twitter and Reddit circles, someone has uploaded a clone version of the 30-year-old video game classic Doom to the Bitcoin blockchain as an inscription on the network's own NFT protocol, Ordinals. This is probably not what Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto had in mind when he created Bitcoin, but thanks to the Taproot upgrade and the controversial Ordinals project, which lets people store unique assets on it, similar to NFTs, you can now play the unofficial clone of the iconic 1993 first-person shooter Doom on the blockchain. I even tested it out, and I'll put a link in the description below if you guys want to try it as well. The game is inscribed on Bitcoin as Inscription 466 and can be played with a keyboard and a mouse. It's a simplistic knockoff of Doom and doesn't pack the gory pixelated punch of the influential original, but it still offers a taste of what's possible through ordinals. Web browsers are still required to compile the code, but forcing unconventional technologies to run Doom is a meme in tech culture. Hackers have made Doom run on pregnancy tests, calculators, ATMs, smartwatches, toasters, and pelotons. While the clone is fun in its own blocky and basic kind of way, an actual copy of the real Doom looks destined to make it to the Bitcoin blockchain sometime soon, as a Reddit thread from February 2018 suggests Doom was once playable on Ethereum. The Ordinal Theory Handbook argues that Bitcoin inscriptions like the Doom clone game are better than NFTs, which are unique blockchain tokens, typically ERC-721 tokens on Ethereum, and they signify ownership over associated metadata that in many cases is stored off-chain in a centralized manner. Every inscription on Bitcoin through Ordinals is labeled as a digital artifact because it is complete and decentralized in and of itself. It's immutable, unlike most NFTs, whose metadata can be modified or even deleted by the creator. Since its launch in January, Ordinals has already caused quite a stir among the Bitcoin community, as maximalists and devotees have debated whether any content should be uploaded to Bitcoin at all. As one might expect from the crypto degen community, much of what has been added to Bitcoin as inscription so far is somewhat like digital graffiti. There are eggplant emojis, Bored Ape Yacht Club knockoffs, along with nudity, music, tweets, gifts, and Donald Trump memes, of course. And in other news, Roofstock, a prop property technology company focused on selling single-family rental homes has completed its second on-chain property sale through Roofstock On-Chain, or ROC, its Web3 subsidiary. Property sold for $180,000 on an NFT marketplace built by Origin Protocol. It's the first home to have been purchased on any NFT marketplace with on-chain leverage from a DeFi lender, Teller Protocol. Roofstock was not designed to be a blockchain project, but as the company grew, it saw potential in blockchain technology and its ability to make single-family rental homes more accessible. Ultimately, what it boils down to is being able to to transact a real world home with one click using NFT smart contracts. So how does it work? Well, the process of purchasing a property through the NFT marketplace is relatively simple. Following existing Web2 real estate processes, a prospective buyer must purchase a real estate property and title as a single purchase limited liability company or LLC. The purpose of the LLC is to hold title for the property. The Web3 part is creating an NFT that is associated with the sole ownership of this LLC. So when people are selling the NFT on a marketplace, in essence, what is really happening is the ownership of the LLC is changing hands. To create an NFT, prospective buyers and sellers must mint new membership tokens through a Know Your Customer check, and once a buyer is verified, their membership token, a non-transferable, sometimes known as a soulbound token, will reflect their verification status. The Web3 home is purchased on an NFT marketplace, and their smart contract checks to see if the buyer is KYC'd for the transfer to go through. This is true for both primary and subsequent sales. In addition, for subsequent sales, the property's diligence info will need to be refreshed, and after which the NFT is updated with a sellable flag. Flag. As the token does not meet the elements of the Howey Four Prong Test, which is a method used by the U.S. Supreme Court to determine whether a transaction is considered an investment contract, it is not considered a security. Another benefit of bringing properties on-chain, or maybe catastrophic failure, is the ability to now provide DeFi lenders with real-world assets as collateral. Roofstock partnered with Teller Protocol to allow borrowers to raise loan requests and finance their purchases through USDC.homes. Once a lender accepts the borrower's request, the protocol will permissionlessly use funds to purchase the LLC NFT, then transfer the NFT to a smart contract escrow vault until loans and interests are repaid. Buyers can make a down payment for as little as 20% of the value of the property, and in the present case of 205 Cloverbrook Drive in Harvest, Alabama, the borrower took out a two-year $108,000 loan at an interest rate of 7%. My guess is he's going to fix it up, refinance it, and then take out a 30-year mortgage on it. 
At least that's my hope. I hope he's not going to take that $100,000 and put it on 100x leverage. But with all that being said, the DeFi world is so much cleaner in terms of how financing can be done. More real world assets coming on chain means that DeFi will see accelerated growth and TVL and other metrics will go up as well. We're also seeing that DeFi has a place in the physical world. Over time, we expect other real world assets like luxury handbags, watches, cars, commercial real estate, commodities, etc. to move on chain. And lastly, online marketplace eBay is looking to prop up its Web3 ambitions by hiring specialists for its NFT marketplace, Known Origin. Those who come on board will be building an understanding of the market, championing the Web3 sector, and improving go-to-market outcomes. Last June, eBay acquired UK-based Known Origin for an undisclosed amount, yet NFTs were already being sold on the platform. eBay announced in 2021 an expansion into the collectibles category as they offer greater access to a broader audience of collectors and creators. eBay also recently partnered with events platform Notable Live to provide fans with a new way to connect with players. Both firms have a multi-year contract under which Notable will add exclusive player merchandise, NFTs, and other interactive experiences on eBay. However, it isn't yet known which blockchain will support Notable's live NFTs. Amazon, who is one of eBay's biggest rivals, recently put up job listings for a senior go-to-market specialist who would be responsible for growing adoption of Web3 workloads in its cloud computing division. eBay's known origin push comes after it was reported that Amazon is soon expecting to launch an NFT initiative pegged to inspire customers to play crypto-based games and claim digital collectible rewards. So on top of the NFT marketplaces like Magic Eden and OpenSea that we already have, I think we're going to see eBay and Amazon compete as top NFT marketplaces in the future as well, and maybe even tying their physical items in with NFTs. If you guys are new here, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.